tonight. We're going to talk a little while on God's Word is Truth. God's Word is Truth. Amen. And we're going to start tonight in John 17, and we're going to start in verse 17. God's Word is Truth. John 17, 17. Who's got that one? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Boy, that's good. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. I have found this to be a truth. They, they said this in Bible college, but it's still true. All truth originates from God. And when I first heard that, I thought, surely there's some other Things that are truth that didn't come from, well, that doesn't make sense. Sure, it all came from the mouth of God. So all truth originates from God. Sanctify them, sanctify them. Sanctify means to be separate. Sanctify means to be different. Sanctify means to be set apart. Sanctified means to be like God. So sanctify them or help them be like God with your truth. And the word is the truth. The more we use the word, the more we resemble God. Look at Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 18. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 18. I'm going to read it to you from the voice translation. It makes it really easy to understand. So God has given us two unchangeable things which are his promises and his oath. These prove that it's impossible for God to lie. Impossible for God to lie. As a result, we who come to God for refuge might be encouraged to seize that hope that is set before us. It's impossible for God to lie. That's the part I want us to catch in contrast to Satan, who is a liar, <laughs> he's a liar. John 8 and 44 says, You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. There is no truth in him. All truth originates from God, but the devil has no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. I was reading John 8 and 44, but I read it from the New International Version. Now, lies are from the devil. Lies are from the devil. And something about the devil, when he lies to us, and he does all the time. He doesn't define it. I'm about to lie to you. <laughs> he doesn't give us the option to say, this might be true or not. He doesn't play that kind of game. He says it in such a way, oftentimes it shows up in the first person because you have this little thought going on in your head. You don't, he does not know if you heard him or not. You can avoid that and say, just get behind me, Satan. You don't have to play with that because he can't read your mind. But when you converse on what was just said, when you say something about what was just said, when you comment on what was just said, he goes, ah, got him, got him. I know I got him. They're stuck in this lie. Satan, since the fall, has been a clever deceiver. He's a very clever deceiver. Before that, he was an anointed cherub that covereth, the Bible says. He was anointed. He was anointed. He knows when the anointing comes because he was anointed. He knows what it is. He was so anointed. When he fell, when he decided to exalt himself against the sides of the north and be greater than God, when he fell, he's so good at lying. His anointing lifted, and he lied. According to the scriptures, he lied to the other angels. Now, 
Anybody know how many angels there are? Let's just let's just put it like this: a bunch. So with this bunch of angels, one third of all the heavenly host was thrown down to the earth with Satan because he lied to them that well and they stood with him against God. Can you imagine? Can can you I can't imagine I can't imagine that. In Revelation twelve it gets to verse four and it says this it says the dragon's massive tail I'm reading it from the Passion Translation. It says in Revelation 12, verse 4, The dragon's massive tail swept across the sky and dragged away one-third of the stars of heaven and cast them onto the earth. Now, this is prophetically speaking about something that already happened, but in the commentaries it says it like this. It says, Satan was such a liar that he was able to convince one-third of the heavenly host to fight with him against God. And they, all one-third of the heavenly angels, and their leader Lucifer himself, was cast onto the earth. Now, you might say, wow, that's a major feat for God. (coughs) But did you know God did not do the casting? He called for Michael, the archangel, and said, Michael, toss him out. He didn't even do it himself. Even Michael, the archangel, was more powerful than Satan and all the cohorts. Now, something interesting, since God didn't do it himself, I mean, his power was there, but any archangel had, even Lucifer was an archangel, but he's not more powerful than God. And as a fallen angel, he's not more powerful than Michael. Are you with me? So, something very interesting to note is that he lied. But the biggest lie he told was to himself. I will exalt myself against the sides of the north. I'll be greater than God. Somehow, how do you convince yourself that that's true? I mean, he, because he was the angel in heaven, the anointed cherub that covereth, If you read that in the commentaries, it says he was covered with a kind of a scale like all over his body. These were reflective scales. So when God showed up, his presence reflected through all of heaven. And Lucifer got so confused, he was convinced he was producing the light. When it came from God, there was not even a light there to go anywhere because the Bible says God is light and in him is no darkness at all and Satan's not the light he's the dark He's there's no light there at all he was nothing more than a mirror and without God putting a reflection of light on him he had no power at all no light in him he convinced one third of the heavenly host to stand with him against God and somehow he believed he had a chance <laughs> To win this battle, I would say it's not a fair fight. Now, I've heard people say, you know, in this world, there's always going to be God and the devil. They're always going to be battling. Mm, Well, I heard this in Bible school. They said it like this. A battle often gives you the idea that it's a fair fight. It's not a fair fight. The devil doesn't battle God. He's battling us. We were made in the image of God. We were made stronger than, than any devil. We were made stronger than the angels. Which means that God put his truth in us so that we can beat the devil with the truth because he's a lie and there's no truth in him. Well, God already defeated the devil through what Jesus did through the cross and his resurrection. And we are the image of Christ on this earth. We are called so, Christians, Christians. We are made the image of God. So we are made to be an overcomer of all the work of darkness. We were already made to be an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. We're never to be defeated. However, it's a lie the devil always tries to tell people. Well, that's not working for you, is it? That's defeating you, isn't it? That's causing you a problem, isn't it? Anybody ever had a problem? Yeah, we all had problems. (laughs) 
Yeah, we probably have problems today, mm-hmm. or at least in the last few days. Sometimes the problems are so insurmountable that we tend to think about the problem instead of thinking about how big our God is. Our God is a deliverer from all trouble. He will deliver us from all problems. He will not leave us. He will not forsake us. We sometimes think, you know, where is God in the midst of this? I can't believe this is going on. He said, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. We sometimes go away from God, not God go away from us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, the devil, so sure of himself, beautiful angel. The Bible says he was a beautiful angel. Beautiful angel. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. He was so beautiful. He was full of himself. He was so beautiful. He thought his, somehow his beauty would be enough to stand up against God. And he was a powerful angel. As long as he was an archangel, he carried a lot of power. Now, he still tries to think he has power. He has no power over Christians, the Bible says. He is, he is a defeated foe. He has no power over us. No power. When the battle is over, when the battle was over there, it completed in heaven, it was not really a battle. It was just done. One third of the heavenly host was gone, cast out of heaven, thrown onto the earth. Now, we've got to think about this. If there's no battle in heaven. Why do we battle here on the earth? There's always a struggle between the flesh and the spirit. That's it. It's our flesh. Mm-hmm. Not our spirit. Our spirit man's not defeated. Mm-hmm. But our flesh man, mm-hmm. because it's made with a choice. Sometimes we choose sin, and that is, a, you know, it's a sin. To hold a grudge. But be out of faith. Be out of faith. Sometimes we are. Sometimes we do it. And then we go, I don't want to know about that right now. Because I want to deal with it. I want to, I want to, I want to play this over in my head a little while before, before I let them go. <laughs> because we sometimes let our flesh run amok. And when it does, it will nothing more than defeat us. Now... The angels that fell believed the lie. Can you imagine that? They were made by God for the use of God. They knew they were made by God. They knew their plan was to be used of God. They knew they were made a little lower than the people. We were made higher than them, but they were made first. And they they lived in this whole idea that they were made. And they were convinced of the devil's lie. They followed that lie, but they still lost. They still saw defeat. They were still cast out of heaven. And they have become the fallen angels, which are now called demons on this earth. They still walk around trying to convince you because the demons have no truth in them either. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, a lie. They, they're of their father, the devil. Mm-hmm. They'll lie. They'll tell you lies. They'll continue. Anybody ever had a little knot on your body and you went, oh, what's that? And you touched it and you played with it and you touched it and you played with it and you touched it. And it started growing. You touched a little more and you played with a little more. And you, <laughs> you touched a little more. Oh, my goodness, it's getting bigger. Well, yeah, you massaged it like 500 times, you know. <laughs> But the devil can tell you, there's something wrong there. You know, I'm a t- I'll tell you what, that looks like cancer to me. And you hear the big C word, and you get all upset, and you're all nervous and everything. Just because they believed the lie, and they acted on the lie, and they thought the lie was true, that does not make it the truth. There's a difference between true and truth. You may have a broken arm. That's true. But what's the Bible say? By his stripes I am healed. That's the truth. His word is the truth. No matter what you're dealing with, I don't care if you're dealing with some physical infirmity, I don't care if you're dealing with financial infirmity, I don't care if you're dealing with a relationship problem. That may be true, 
But His Word still is the truth. My God supplies all my needs. That's the truth. My God heals my body. He promised me by His stripes I'm healed. That's the truth. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not like the world gives to you will I give to you. Peace. If we don't walk in peace, we're not quoting the Word and absorbing the truth. We're listening to the lies and looking at the situation, which may be true, but it's not the truth. Are you with me? You see the difference? Because sometimes we think if it's true... It's the truth. But it's not. Right. Just because... You know, don't get confused. Because just because you have an attack of the devil, it does not mean his word is void. Because the truth is, by his stripes I'm healed. So you hang on to the truth, no matter what lies report you is. see, no matter what report is, mm-hmm. a true report. Because the doctor will give you a report. Yeah. Doctors give you a report. The dentist will give you a report. The eye doctor will give you a report. Bank account. Bank account gives you a report. All these accountants give you a report. Mm-hmm. They're reports that and it may be true, but it's not the truth. Right. The word is the, the final the truth. The word is the final truth. There's no other truth higher yeah. than the word. You've got to hang on to the word yeah. no matter what you hear otherwise. Right. you got to do. you got to hang on to the word. Those fallen angels acted on they thought was true, but their truth, the true word that they heard from Satan, it was a lie. That's the truth. That's all he speaks. When he speaks, he speaks a lie. We know he's a liar. He speaks lies. It's true. He speaks a lie. It's still not the truth. That's right. We know he's a liar. Mm-hmm. But why do some people listen to it? It's so convincing. They're deceived. Yeah. They can ease. We get easily deceived. Mm-hmm. We do that because we're in this body of flesh. Don't you think it's Our spirit man's not deceived. You think it's because we go by what we see? Because what we have a tendency to do, if it's a, if it's a bad relationship, we're going by what we're seeing there or finances what's in the bank account what we're body. in our body because mm-hmm. we can see that so we go by yeah. what we see sometimes this is really interesting I've had situations much like your son where I'm looking for something I think other people get them and I'm not getting them and they're stealing them from me I've had very very same thing happen Talking big deals, and I'm I'm messed up. It's like, wow, I can't believe they're doing that to me. I said, that's just wild. I'm fighting emotions and trying to get myself back because of that. Well, the devil's doing everything he can to lie to me and let me know. But God is greater. Right. God is greater than any circumstance. And if we quote this word on that, he is greater. The Bible says, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I can do all things through Christ. I can tell you there are so many times I had to quote that to try to get myself to pull myself up. Because even David had to encourage himself in the Lord. And sometimes, because we're in this body, we do go by what we see. And we get so deceived by what we see because what we see, we call it true. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes we call it That's the truth. But it's not the truth. The Word is the truth. It's the highest authority of truth. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to change something, we have to quote the Word instead of what we heard. That's going to help somebody. We need to grab a hold of that. Because what we've been holding on to sometimes may be true, but it's not the truth. The truth is God's on our side. He'll never leave us. He won't forsake us. He wants us to make it. We're more than overcomers. The truth, the truth, the devil cannot produce the truth. There's no truth in him. The truth, the truth is not in him. He is a liar. If we've ever run into someone and we call him a liar, and I've done that, because I've seen them lie, and they'll lie, they'll lie to my face. They know somebody just told me something. They're standing right there, and they'll tell me something different. And what he said. What, did you hear what he said? 
and they'll say something completely different. And I, in my mind, I'm thinking, you liar. <laughs> you liar. Why does someone who is perfectly easy to tell the truth, why would they tell a lie instead? Because we're still in this fleshly body. We try to manipulate things. We move things. We try to get people's feelings to change by what we tell them, even though it's not true. Mm -hmm. Even though it's a lie. It's no, not the truth at all. The devil is trying to get people to be moved by his words. Now, we, with hate in his heart, the devil will do this. He tries to get someone to think that he's bigger than God. He often says that. He tried to tell God he was bigger than him. Mm -hmm. And he's told, many of my friends have said, well, I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to say that because I don't want to upset the devil and have him get me. <laughs> I, he'll, come and get he'll come and get me. He'll get me. The devil come against me. I don't want him to get me. You know, I know it sounds weird, but it's not. Tr it's not the truth. The truth is, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You can do all things through Christ. Now, he makes a lie often look like the truth. He'll try to make you think, but he, he, he tells you it's true. You're having a problem with your body. It's true. Can you see that? You're, it's true. And he'll say, this is so true. You need to make a change to follow what you know is true. And we hear that. And sometimes we go with that, but we don't stop to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. But that's not the truth. The truth is, by his stripes I am healed. Mm -hmm. And we don't quote that truth. If we would stop and put the truth in it, that's the word of God, our minds will come in order. That's why it says continually renew your mind right. to the word of God. Continually renew your mind. It gives him great pleasure... When he discourages you, when he destroys you, when he isolates you from the word and gets you to quote the lie like it's the truth. Because he doesn't want you to quote the truth, he wants you to quote his lie. Mm -hmm. Satan's method of attack is still by mouth. It's always been with his mouth. It's still with his mouth. We think, gosh, I'm not going to let that happen to me. <laughs> it happens to the best. Have you ever heard of great priests that were over a Catholic church and all of a sudden they decided they were going to be in love with little boys? Now, where'd that lie come from? Because they say, well, it's not like having an affair <laughs> it's not like being with a woman <laughs> you know I don't know where that kind of conversation would come from but you know it's a lie now we can recognize it on the outside at this time but we all have fallen prey to the very lies the very same type of lies that the devil uses on every. not everybody gets the same lie because if I was to say to you tomorrow you're going to be tempted to walk on the moon. You probably say, liar. <laughs> I mean, you, you'd know that's not going to work. That's not going to happen. That, that's not true. Or somebody said, tomorrow you're going to be caught in a drug sting. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't even deal with that. I will, I will not be a part of that. But the devil doesn't use those things that we know we're not going to do. He used the things that we ride the fence on. We go back a little bit this way. We go back a little bit that way. We say a little thing that we're not supposed to say. We do a little thing we're not supposed to do. We're thinking about something. You know, even our thoughts, the devil tries to make you think. He can think. He can hear what you think. Because mm -hmm. I had people say, I'm not even going to think that thought. The devil might hear me. Oh, Which is a lie. How did he convince them that he can <coughs> hear? He's not everywhere all the time. Right. He's not like God, but he's convinced people, many people, mm -hmm. that he's an equal quality with God. It's God against the devil. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Now, he's a liar. 
And man acts on what he thinks is true. Not truth most of the time. He'll act on what he thinks is true. For instance, we have a conversation with someone and they've hurt our feelings. And we have a conversation the next time they hurt our feelings. We have a conversation the third time they hurt our feelings. What do you know about this person? <laughs> Stay away from them. Thank you. I will not do that again. I've been hurt three times by this very person. I will keep myself away. We did not know the first time somebody had been telling them something about us, so they were telling us something that tried to get to us. The second time, we did not know. They just had a terrible break breakdown at work and lost some money and had an accident on the way home. And so they weren't being against us. They were just being against life. And the third time, you don't know that they were dealing with something physically, but we're going to avoid them from now on because they tried to hurt my feelings. Mm-hmm. We, think, we act on what we think is true. Right. We act on what we think is true. And the Bible says... Act on what is the truth. His word is truth. We need to learn how to recognize the truth. Truth should be recognizable. When I worked at a bank, they brought in the FBI. They made us sit down in the... In the we had a big kitchen area. They made us all sit down in the kitchen. They brought, FBI brought in $100 bills and made us sit there in this big round table with all 35 of us. And we sat there in $100 bills. We looked at it. We were playing all this money. It was grand until he said, y'all stay here and study those bills and I'll be back in a couple hours. What? I thought this was supposed to be a class on learning how how counterfeiters work. It is. Study those bills. Don't let anything out of your way. Notice how the, the, the colors are. Notice where the stripes are. Notice where the numbers are and how the numbers go. Notice the sequence of numbers. Notice how the paper feels. Notice everything about it. You need to sit here for two hours and learn this. Everybody looked at each other just dumbfounded like, this is the stupidest class we ever had. This is the FBI? For heaven's sake, this is stupid. It's stupid thing. We all convinced ourselves how stupid it was. And we sat there and felt it. Some of the bosses back there just kept talking about how stupid it was. It's stupid. It's really stupid. All the tellers need to be doing this. I don't need to be doing this. You tellers sit up here and read this. And we're, we're feeling it. We're looking at the paper. And then he comes back in after two hours. And he says, how are you doing? And a few people had commented on this, 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 this. He said, you haven't studied enough. I'll give you two more hours. I'm floored. This is my break. <laughs> I don't need two more hours of this. Two more and four hours. We're sitting there holding these bills, touching these bills. And finally, he came in and collected all the bills. And he said, now we're going to do a little experiment. I'm going to pass around some real and some fake. You tell me what you think. Everybody's going to get a real and a fake. He passed them out. Picked them up. I said, hold up your fake bill. Everybody held up the fake bill. He said, very good, very good. How many had trouble? Nobody had trouble. He said, you know why he had no trouble? Because you learned what was truth. Mm -hmm. You learned the bills. Mm -hmm. The more you know the truth, the truth will set you free from the lies. Mm -hmm. So you got to know the truth. That's why he said, study my word. That's why he said, you got to put the word in front of you. That's why he said, you got to meditate. So when lies come, you can go, that's not the truth. I know the truth. <laughs> that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So you need to know the truth. Now, <clears throat> we immediately noticed, no matter how many bills he handed out, we immediately noticed which ones were the truth, which ones were the real. We can tell the real. Now, this is the way it's supposed to be concerning God's Word. You're supposed to be able to recognize the truth against all lies. That's why I said study the Word. 
In 2 Timothy 2, in verse 15, it says, Study to show yourself approved. Study, study, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Because when anything else comes but the truth in 2 Timothy 2.15, you're supposed to be able to say, that's not the truth. That's right. That's a lie. So you meditate the word till it sinks in your heart. You speak the word all the time. Mm-hmm. And even if you hear a whisper and it's not the truth, you can say, that's not God. In Matthew 16.23, it says, get thee behind me, Satan. You ought to say, Satan, stop it. Stop it. I'm not going to listen to your lies. We need to recognize the voice of the devil and separate it from the voice of God with no hesitation. We need to know the truth and let the truth set us free. The key in all this is you must know the voice of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, If you have not really practiced listening to the voice of the Lord, I'm going to tell you what. The Word of God is the voice of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's right. When you read the Word of God, you begin to learn what He sounds like. Mm -hmm. He sounds like His Word. That's right. He sounds like His Word. Anybody ever hear Edgar Allan Poe talk his book? Mm-hmm. No? No. There wasn't recording during that time. <laughs> but how many ever read an Edgar Allan Poe book? Or had somebody read an Edgar Allan Poe book? You probably heard some excerpts from Edgar Allan Poe. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, Nevermore. You heard some excerpts from Edgar Allan Poe. But... You don't know what he sounds like. Or do you? Because you know his words. Mm -hmm. So we assume he sounds like his words. God sounds like his words. So if you haven't heard the voice of God, I'm going to say, you need to soak yourself with more word and you're going to be able to recognize when he's speaking because his words are truth. Now he's, he's leading and guiding us into the truth, the Bible says. If he's leading and guiding us, he's going to show us things that we don't we we didn't hear in the scripture, but we know it's the truth because he also verifies mm-hmm. everything by his word. Mm-hmm. He always gives us two or three witnesses. It's always verified by his word. So we can listen to his word and know it. The key is know his word and you will know his voice. In John 10.27, in the message translation, it says it like this. My sheep recognize my voice. You probably heard it in, in King James where it's my sheep know my voice. In message it says my sheep recognize. What a difference. Recognize my voice and they will follow me. My sheep recognize my voice. That means you need to act on the truth and not listen to a lie. Acting on a lie makes your actions in vain. Doing something in vain. The only actions that count are actions based on the truth. You've got to do actions based on the truth. They count. In John 8... And verse 31, it says it in the New King James, it says, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, and my word in you, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. How do you get the truth to set you free? You got to know the word. <laughs> oh, well, so this is not uncommon. Go ahead. No, there's a scripture in Hebrews that says that I'm paraphrasing. When your senses are exercised enough, 
you then become more knowledgeable between good and evil. Yep. Well, the same is with the Word. When you exercise yourself with the, with the Word of God, you will, you, know you will know good the difference from evil. between true and the truth. True, yeah. A lie yeah. and the truth. You're fake and you're real. Right, mm-hmm. fake and real. Mm-hmm. Fake and real. Now, when you believe the truth, the Bible says... To live continually in Him. Abide in Him. Live continually in Him. Remain continually in Him. That's knowing That's knowing the Word. That's abiding in the Word and letting the Word abide in you. You have allowed the truth to live in you. Allowed the truth to remain in you. We don't have a problem with allowing the Word to live in us. Where we have a problem is allowing the Word to remain in us. Because we're so busy with so many other things. we got so much stuff going on. We have, trouble with the rem- we have trouble with the Word abiding in us. We can abide in the Word. I read the Bible. I've heard lots and lots of people. I read the Bible today. I read an hour and a half. Praise God. I know, I know a person that won't, won't even begin the day until they've read their Bible three chapters every day, every day. Or they've been doing it for almost 86 years, 87 years. Hmm. Well, let's say since they were 15, so that's going to be like 70, 71 years. <laughs> they've been reading it every day. Mm-hmm. But you know, if you abide in the Word, that, that's good. But the Word's got to abide in you. If you don't grab a hold of it, you will not conform to the image of God. Mm -hmm. So the devil can still play havoc on you, still trick you, still cause you to be deceived, because you don't let the Word stay in you. If you abide in the Word, that's the first part, and the Word abides in you, that's the second part, then you are my disciples indeed. Mm -hmm. And you shall know the truth. Not just, I heard it this morning, but I don't remember what I was reading. You will know the truth, and the truth has set you free. Mm -hmm. You'll be free from any of the devil's lies. You will not believe the lie. Now, in James chapter 2 and verse 19, it says, You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe. That's the fallen angels. Of course they believe there's a God. He talks (laughs) the heavens of Michael. Come here. Get rid of that thing over there. That's crazy. And tossed them out of... And they tremble, it says. That demons are scared of God. But do you want to know, O foolish man, faith without works is dead. It's still dead. If you don't do some action to your faith... We talked about this a couple weeks ago. you got to act on your faith. If you don't add some action to your faith, it does you no good. So people that... Say, well, I know the Word. I read it this morning. I don't remember what I was reading, but it's good. You've got to abide in the Word and let the Word abide in you. How do you let the Word abide in you? You say it. You say the Word. It's abiding in you. Because the more you say it, you become like an actor. Mm -hmm. Actors don't memorize their lines. They quote their lines often enough that the words on the page become them. Mm -hmm. They quote it and they say it and they quote it and they say it and they quote it. And they have little practice sessions and people sit with them and they talk about it. That's the way not only to memorize, but it become part of you. It lets that word abide in you. So you got to say it. You got to quote it. You got to say it out loud. You got to quote, by his stripes I'm healed. You got to quote, he provides all my needs. You can, sometimes we, we know that, but it's so hard to make ourselves break down and say that, especially more than once a day. I said that this morning, but we need to do it because we need to convince ourselves. Mm-hmm and all the demonic foes that we are of God. We abide in Him and His Word abides in us. 
then it says, you'll know the truth and it set you free. Amen. So, what it says there in James, in James 2, when it says the demons know, the demons do know. But don't you know that faith without works is dead? That's faith in action. Faith in action. Because that's what belief really is. Faith is a noun. Believing is a verb. That means you've got to do something with it. Do something. In Matthew chapter 2, in verse 29, it says it like this. Jesus touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be so. He touched them. And he said, According to your faith, according to your faith, it's easy to stand in faith when you're in church. Oh, we we praise the Lord and we're standing in faith because the Word inspires us. Don't you get inspired when you hear the Word? You hear the Word and you're like, yeah, yeah, amen, praise God. Because you're abiding in it right then. I mean, hey, you're abiding in it. But when you leave, how much of it is abiding in you? That's the Word abiding in you. Are you still able to fight? Are you still able to stand? When you're not there in the sanctuary? See, it's easy to have faith during praise and worship. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, outside the sanctuary, when it's not praise and worship going on, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. Because we got to stand up and nobody else is there. You don't have a cheerleader going on. You don't have a preacher going on. You don't have... You just by yourself. Mm -hmm. That's the hardest way to do it. And when we're by ourselves, oh, what a struggle. Because we don't like the sensation of having to be alone. Mm-hmm. We'd rather be with someone else. We, 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 we'd rather be with someone else. But I can't be with someone all the time. Neither can you. We often have to fight alone. It seems like, a, but the Bible says, Jesus said, um, um, God told us, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we question, though, did you go somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> Have you left me? No, yeah. he did not leave. When the liar comes, and he will come, in this world you're going to have the liar come, you've got to apply your faith in recognizing the truth. Faith in action is when you quote the word, that's faith in action. Because it's now believing the word instead of just having you're, ab- you're abiding in the word and the word's abiding in you when you quote the word. Mm-hmm. Just because something is true does not mean it's the truth. Amen. Now, for the next few minutes, I'm going to give you something on how you can stand in the truth of God. Standing in His truth. Our enemy, the devil, he lies to us. There's no truth in him. And he hates God and all those that follow him. I've had people say, the more you follow God, the decision is going to make the devil mad. He's already mad. He's not going to heaven. He's got a place already prepared for him in the lake of fire. He knows that's... He's read the end of the book himself. He knows that's where he's going. But he wants your destruction to come because you've listened to the lies. He can't get to God, but he can get to you, God's creation, in his image. As long as he can get you to be destroyed, he thinks he's doing pretty good. He's still not out of it. He still thinks he's got a shot. Can you believe that? He thinks if I could just get rid of God's creation, I'll get to God. We are in a spiritual war. Ephesians 6, it says in verse 10, Ephesians 6, Starting in verse 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, 
Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Now, how many times have we heard that? We probably heard that, oh, at least 50 times, maybe a 100, maybe a 1,000. Put on the armor of God. This is the way to do warfare and stand strong in the truth. You put on the armor of God that you be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The wiles of the devil. The wiles of the devil is the methods of the devil. Taken from the Greek, it's methodios. If you hear the methods of the devil, he's a liar. We know how he, what he's going to do. He's a liar. He's been a liar from the beginning. He's a liar. And he's going to lie out of his mouth to try to get you. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers, and against rulers of darkness of this age, and against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places, Therefore, take unto yourself the whole armor of God. It tells us again, take on the armor of God that you'll be able to stand and withstand the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand. That's for when we're alone. You got to stand. You got to stand. You got to stand. Girding your waist with truth. Now, he tells you how to fight against the devil. You better hang on to the word. His word is truth. Hang on to the word. You put on the breastplate of righteousness. You shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, you take the shield of faith. With it, you'll be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. What do you think the fiery darts of the wicked one are? His lies. He can't hit you with anything else. He can't pick up a rock and throw it at your head. He can't drop a beam from the ceiling. He can't make you slip down a hole. All he's got is lies. And he lies to us so good. He'll say something like this. You can't do that. You can't do that. You, but he does it in the first person. I can't do that. I can't do that. And he'll lie to us like we're hearing ourselves talk. Oh, I'm afraid. And so we speak what he's been talking to us. Then he goes, ah, I, I got him. I got him. Because he's a liar and the father of lies. And he were able to quench the fiery darts or the lies of the wicked one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. And listen, which is the word of God. Now, more often than any other scripture... This scripture tells us, take the word, take the word, take the word, take the word. How do we fight the devil? With the word. How do we stand strong? With the word. So this is what he's telling us to do. Take the word, take the word, take the word. Now, you got to know your enemy. I'm going to give you some keys how to stand in the truth. You ready for this? Number one. He always will tell you lies about holding people in transgression. They've done something against you. So we hold them in lies. We hold them in their transgression. In other words, we do not forgive others. So he lies to you and says, you can't forgive them. Don't you know what they did to you? You can't let them go. Don't you know how they hurt you? You can't forgive them. When you forgive others, you set yourself free. Second Corinthians 2 and verse 10, it says this. For whom you forgive of anything, I also forgive. This is the word Paul was writing to the church at, at Corinth. And this is the word of the Lord. He says, whoever you forgive anything, I also forgive. For if indeed I have forgiven anything, I have forgiven that one for your sakes in the presence of Christ. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. We're not ignorant of his devices. He's a liar. That's his device. He's a liar. If you're holding a grudge against someone, the lie has become greater than the truth. Right. 
The truth is, the Bible says, forgive and you'll be forgiven. Forgive. He says, don't hold a grudge. Don't hold them hostage. Let them go. This is the word. The lie from the devil, the lie from the devil is not forgive. But the truth is forgive them. Even Jesus forgave those when he was hanging on the cross. He said, forgive them, Father. They do not know what they're doing. A spirit of unforgiveness will compromise your daily Christian walk. Mm -hmm. I know that's a lot. Because we all have had people hurt us so much we don't want to forgive them. We, I'll forgive them when I get to heaven. No, you need to forgive them now. Mm -hmm. Forgive. So the first one is, if you're going to do anything keys to the truth, number one, forgive. Number two. Number two. The devil will often tell us lies about what will make us happy. If you get a new house, you'll be happy. If you move to the coast, you'll be happy. If you get a new car, you'll be happy. If you keep the baby, you'll be happy. Yeah. He tells us all these things that we know cannot be true, but we listen to the enemy. Listen, he lies to us about money. He lies to us about pleasure. He lies to us about power. He lies to us about people. He's lying. What will make us happy? Well, if I'll be happy if I don't if I don't talk to them anymore. That'll make me happy. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's not the truth. He will lie to us. All these things, no matter what it is, if it's a lie will not bring happiness. Because the devil is a liar. He's the father of lies. He's been a liar from the beginning. Only God can make you happy. In the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. Only God can make you happy. If you hang out with the devil's lies... I guarantee you, you will be an unhappy person. Think about it. Anybody that you know that has let the devil lie to them about something and they got really unhappy about life, about people. Sometimes I've had people get unhappy with me because the devil lied to them so much people believed the lie and they got unhappy with me. And even leaving the church, they were still unhappy with me. Even leaving the city, they were still unhappy with me. Even leaving the country, they were still unhappy with me. And you think, gosh, they should be happy by now. But the devil had lied to them so much, they thought if they would just hold this grudge against me, they would be happy. But they're miserable. Mm -hmm. And they don't know why. Because they're hanging out with the father of lies. And the father of lies, everything he does will make you unhappy. Only God can bring you happiness. So the lie is, I'll lead you to happiness, but he doesn't. He leads you to lies. He leads you to unhappiness. He leads you to unhappiness. Amen. And we know that John eight forty four says he's a liar. He's a liar. He never will speak the truth to us. Never. Number three. He lies to us and attempts to get us to stir up division. Mm -hmm. I know lots of people that have been caught in this one. Great people, but they got caught in stirring up division. Let me put it like this. Number three, God is into unity. The way you beat lies is with the truth. You've got to stand in the truth that means unity no matter what. Unity. 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 He lies to you. He'll use personalities, communications, disruptions. 
He uses anything he can to get you to stay a little bit in strife. He'll do it to even best of friends, even relatives, even spouses. He'll try to put a little strife in there. The words were just, they weren't quite right today. You must be holding a little grudge. Is there something wrong with you? You've been acting real weird. But then, instead of responding, well, let's pray. We respond, now don't give me that junk. And now we've really got a, a situation on our hands. So I say, it's a demonic ploy. Can you see this? Every one of us have fallen prey to a demonic attempt to get us out of unity. He lies. And he attempts to play off our weaknesses. We all know where our weaknesses are. We're, we're not surprised by our weakness. We all know where our weaknesses are. And he attempts to play off our weaknesses. With some people, it's politics. Some people, it's just outright hatred or anger. They're always angry and you don't know why they're angry. They're just angry. Some people are into themselves and will not have anything to do with you. And we get so mad. Why don't those people want to have anything to do? I'm so nice. I'm so nice. And they won't have anything to do with me. I'm going to tell you, they've listened to a lie. They follow the lie. And if you get sucked into that, you're easily becoming dismembered from the fullness of God because now instead of listening to the truth you're trying to rectify a liar wow we do that all the time we do it with relatives we do it with friends we do it with people that are not friends we say well I don't want any bad blood I, I want to fix this <coughs> so we try to fix something and they've been listening to a lie you know you're not uh, uh, help somebody you're not the Holy Spirit Junior. You may not know that, but we were not called to be the one to bring them to the truth. The Holy Spirit leads and guides them to the truth. Now you can pray for them to have their eyes open. The Bible says that. Pray that their eyes be open. Pray that they be led to the truth. Because you're not the problem. But sometimes they think we are, and they talk about it, and we get so desperate to make it work sometimes when the devil's doing everything to keep them in disunity. Number four. Number four. The devil will lie to us in such a way to attempt to make us afraid or worried or discouraged. How do we fight that? You gotta do what the Bible says 365 times. It says, Fear not. Isn't that interesting? Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. He attempts to make us be in fear when if you really operate in the truth, you can be not in fear. You have to stand strong against fear, against worry, against the attempts to be discouraged. Do you know how many times a day the devil tries to discourage you? Hundreds, hundreds, maybe thousands. Every little thing. Well, I, I just can't do this. I, this is not working for me. I don't know what's wrong with it. And it won't work for me. That ever happened? We've all been caught in almost to a point where we let discouragement take over and we sucked into the lie. We got sucked into the lie. Now, he attempts to win us over to a place where we can be in fear and discouragement. He wants us to worry. And that's why the most popular theme of the Bible, like I say, mentioned 365 times, it says, fear not. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. John 14 and verse 27, it says, Peace, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not like the world gives to you, give I you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. Don't you dare get discouraged and don't be afraid. 
God is love and perfect love casts out fear. If you're going to be like God, you need to be like God so that the truth is in you. It will make the devil leave because you are like God. It casts out the devil. you got to rest in the truth, not listen to the lie. And number five, the devil will lie to you about what is your true identity. The way you fight that, I'm talking about your identity in Christ, the way you fight that is you need to know who you are in Christ. You need to know your identity in Christ. You need to know that you are identify with Christ. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 says, For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be offered as sin, so that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. We've already been made in the image of God. We've been made the righteousness of Christ. We need to identify with Christ. The devil will do everything to tell you that's, it doesn't seem to be working for you. Gosh, I think everybody knows this. There's something wrong with you. We've all heard this. You know, everybody knows. Everybody knows you're not, you're not right all the time. And so there's no sense in hiding it anymore. You might as well just step out of the church. Some people think the church is the way it is because I'm there. There's a problem. Listen, any church you go to, there's something going to be wrong because we're there. We are not right all the time because our flesh gets in the way. But you need to identify with Christ. The Bible says, when you are in Christ, you're a new creature. All things have passed away. All things have become new. All things are of God. You need to gird yourself up with Jesus Christ. Stand firm in your identity as Christ. I am a Christian. I am Christ-like. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. God and his word are one. God's word is truth. God's word is in me. Mm -hmm. Jesus and and the word are one. So the truth is in him. Mm -hmm. Jesus lives in us. The truth is in us. Praise God. That's all we have.